Lee is a big Arsenal fan. Good morning to you, Lee. Where's your head with us now? All right. Hi, Jim. I spoke to you a little while ago when Danny Murphy and Simon were in there. And right. uh, I said about maybe the double. But, yeah, when, uh, Bright- when they play Brighton at the weekend, no one's beat Brighton at home since August. And Gabrielle, when they, went- when they got that clean sheet, the-, the fight and the belief of when they got that clean sheet, Jurgen Klopp said yesterday, if Man United play like they did like they did yesterday, Arsenal will beat them. Even Jurgen Klopp said that. I can't see Tottenham beating us. I can't see many people getting through our defence. You know, I can't really see them doing it. The, the, the team is just... The passion they've got at the minute is just so good. The, their belief, their strength... You know, they just want it more and more this season. Yeah. And like when Emil Smith-Rowe come on, he, he got two assists. He hasn't, he hasn't even played this season. He got two assists for the goals. Thomas Party, he was absolutely brilliant. Like Jorginho, he, he, he got the assist. He, he, was, he, he ran all the way up the pitch. You never normally <laughs> see him up there for that goal at Brighton. So, so Lee, am I right? Is there a newfound confidence amongst Arsenal fans that you'll do it? It's just the belief, I think. Like, you know, we're going to, like, buy Munich. I mean, the only person we've really got to worry about is Harry Kane. But is Harry Kane going to get through our defence with Gabriel and William Saliba? Is he really going to get through them? Wow, Arsenal can do no wrong, Lee. (laughs) All right, listen, Lee, thank you for that. Brimming with confidence. Are you, Kevin, big Arsenal fan? Are you the same? Do you think it's, it's there to be one and you can do it? Absolutely, Jim. Uh, morning, everyone. Morning, Kevin. Um, yeah, so similar to the last caller, it's really, you know, it is, you know, very close at the top three, and it's hard to call. But it look, if you look at form now, I think that Arsenal are showing championship, championship winning form. They're, they're up there, and they're playing every game. They're going out in a hard test, and they're 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 winning. They're doing it right, one, you know, one after the other. It's just happening now. And I just think that's the difference between us and the city. And, and is this the best you've felt, Kevin? Is this the most positive you've felt? Yeah, for about 20 years, I, I think. <laughs> it's still nervous. Still, every game's a nervous and test, and we've got some really tough tests coming up. But I just think the form now is Premier League winning title form. And I think Liverpool didn't show that yesterday. And I think City, particularly the game against us, where they would usually like go over us and, you know, um, like wash us away. Yeah. Uh, they didn't do it this time. Okay, we Kevin, listen, thank you for that. Arsenal fans queuing up to talk to us, Graham. Here's Steve. Steve, what do you want to say and then we'll have a say back. On you go. Uh, yeah, hi. Um, Morning. I think, that, I think that what we've done from last season is that we've learned from last season. This, Had we had this squad last season, we would have been champions last year. I think that we last season we found ourselves in a position rather than it was expected. I mean, you say that we bottled it, but then we had the chance to win it. But so did so many other clubs, but none, none of those ever get mentioned. I think we're in a fantastic position. Uh, and I'll just reiterate what the other callers have said. I think that it's there to be won. Probably City are still favourites with the bookies. Uh, they don't often get things wrong on that there. Um, yeah, I think we're definitely in with a shout, and I'm I'm actually thinking that we've probably got more chance of the of the Champions League than what we have the Premier League. But we're in box position; it is in our own hands, and let's see what we've learned from last season. Without last season, we wouldn't have been in this position. Now we've learned, and we've actually some of the some of the memories of how we collapsed last year with the injuries and everything is what's really motivating this team to go forward. What a great call, Steve. Steve, listen, thank you for that. I mean, he's showing that in adversity, you can learn, you can move on and get yourself to a better place, Graham. Yeah, that's that's life, not just football. Learn from your mistakes. I mean, no doubt about it, Arsenal will be richer and better for the experience of last year, as hard as it was to take at the time. Arsenal have the momentum with them. They have great belief. But, you know, so does City. And, And Liverpool have to get back into the game immediately. And it's impossible to look at what fixtures are left and say, well, that's going to be a, an easy one in that one. Someone could get sent off. Someone, you know, could referee make some bad decisions on the day. Anything can happen in football. 
So you'd be a brave man to say that <laughs> with seven games to go, who's going to win the league? But they're all believing. A few, a few. Um, yeah. You know, it's quite. It's, it's it's a normal reaction for Liverpool supporters to feel that oh we've blown it. I don't see it like that. It's still very much game on for City. They've got that inner belief because they are the current champions and. Um, I've won it the last three years so they've got a tremendous belief about them and right now Arsenal have that belief and you, you can he hear that from their supporters Do you think the fixtures I mean I, I think it's probably undoubtable that Arsenal have got the most difficult run in if you look at the games that they've got left they've got to play them in amongst the seven they've got to play they've got to play Villa, Chelsea, Spurs and United whereas whereas Liverpool have got to play Villa and Spurs I'm not suggesting that Wolverhampton Wanderers and Fulham and Everton are not games that are going to be challenging but on paper you'd expect them to win and then City have got Spurs well, amongst their group of players. I but Arsenal say, have been good in the league, though, Simon, against the big guns. They haven't lost to City or Liverpool. That, 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 I was, I'm asking Graham, does he think that but ultimately can, playing the bigger sides are going to make so it? I can, I can tell you, the pros don't see it like that. That's what I'm asking you. They don't see it like that. They'll look as far as the next game. And that's how you have to approach it. And, you know, the, the lesser games you think on paper can, can turn out to be the most difficult ones. So you treat each game as it comes along as boring, and you'll hear every pro say it, the next game is the only game that matters. The next one is the important one. And then after that, let's see where we are. And then after that, next one, let's see where we are. The next game is the priority. Yeah. Don't be looking... You know, you could be out of it by the time Arsenal go to, to, to Spurs. They could have lost a couple of... Just the next game has to be taken care of. I mean, typically, there are those out there who want to see Arsenal mess up again. There's Jason and Brian. It's going to be hilarious when Arsenal crash again. At the moment, I can't see where the crash is going to happen, Simon. Well, look, I mean, you have circumstances that can unfold. They could get knocked out of the of, of the Champions League by Bayern and they could reel away from that. They could lose a key player. Saka could get He's played a lot of games. He could get injured. Declan Rice could get injured and they could lose some balance. I don't think that's going to... I don't, I don't think that will happen, but, you know, you can price those into your thinking. I don't... Listen, Arsenal fans are happy because they've listened to people repeatedly say that their side bottled it last year. And they didn't lose the league because they lost the City twice in a fortnight. It wasn't a fortnight. The point is they lost it because they dropped points in games like West Ham and Southampton and other teams that they shouldn't have dropped points in. That's why they, people accuse them of bottling it. And it's a fair assessment. So now Arsenal fans are seeing a side that's at it and on it and across it. They so, weren't great against Porto in the Champions League. They got through that, huffed and puffed their way through that. So they can be stopped. They can be made to look like a side that can't just cut through anything. Because Porto... Did that to them? None, none of the guys who were involved in this, out of three teams, would be happy if you said, "Well, if you, you know, you lose a game, say in the Champions League or in Liverpool's case against Atlanta, that would impact them going forward." I, I would hate that to be said about me. The players I played with not have accepted that. I think what is, what is a, a bigger worry? You know, you get hamstring. You get injuries yeah. to key men. That's a, that's, that's a bigger thing. Yeah. Not that you lose a game you don't. Big players bounce back immediately. Yeah. They hate that feeling of losing. So that, you know, they've got a bed, it keeps them awake, they wake up, they want to play the next day. I know you've got your Liverpool hat on, but I'll still ask you, is Arsenal winning it the best story of the lot? Of the three of them, I, I would. I've, I've Arsenal always, winning no, it. Is that the about, story? No, it's not about a story. The team that wins it deserves to win it. End off. There's no luck involved in winning the league. But breaking you, the duopoly. No, I'm not interested in it. There's no, Liverpool have won it once in the last, I don't know, 30 years 30, or something. Yeah. So, you know, there's no there's no better story for me. I know how difficult it is to win the league. You win the league, you deserve it. You, it's not because you've been luckier than anyone else. You've been better than them over a, a difficult nine months. I'll put it out there. I mean, I don't know what you think, Simon. I think it might be flat if City win it. Anyone who's not a Manchester City fan of it are. City again. Well, it feeds the underlying narrative that you've got a monopoly on the Premier League and is that a good thing? See, it's interesting you talk about big players because I would suggest to you how many of those Arsenal players are big players? Big players are ones that you became a big player by winning things. They haven't won anything yet. So when you talk about and you scoff at the idea that they won't f they, they won't fall at the narrative, they won't fall... Any player wouldn't, wouldn't accept... That you lose a game and it impacts you going forward. I'm not for saying that they the would, but, it's, but psychological impact isn't something you embrace. Something sometimes it's something that happens. Oh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a great, and you know, I'll never get fed up talking about it because I've been part of dressing rooms. I was lucky enough to have that at Glasgow Rangers when I was a manager. But I've been part of a dressing room where it was all the senior players were the were the catalysts. They carried the lesser lights through the difficult moments. Because they'd won things previously. Mm. Mm. Well, I, that's, that's who did that at Rangers? Butcher and you. Oh, come. 
I had Mark Hitley, I had Goffey, I had Ray Wilkins, I had Butcher. Mm. I had some serious men that there was no job for the manager to do when they were there. They sorted it. Yeah. And I'd better miss someone out of that because I had some proper, proper men. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.